This video is about optimization. That's where you try to find the best possible outcome given certain conditions. In this case, we are going to be maximizing area. And this is going to be an interesting case because it's going to involve an endpoint maximum. And I'll show you what that means later. So four feet of wire is to be used to form a square and a circle. How much of the wire should be used for the square and how much should be used for the circle to enclose the maximum total area? So the idea is, should we use two feet for the square and two feet for the circle or three feet for the square and one foot for the circle or what? We're going to need some variables. So we can get away with uh, a single variable x for the square, since automatically all four sides will be length x. For a circle, the defining characteristic is going to be the radius. So we'll definitely need r. When you are solving an optimization problem, you're going to have to set up a primary equation and a secondary equation. The primary equation is always going to represent whatever it is that you're trying to maximize. In, the, in this case, total area. The secondary equation will reflect some other condition that uh, you're being forced to deal with. So let's start with the primary equation. We need an equation for the total area enclosed by both of these shapes. So just for fun, I'm going to put in this extra step and I'm just going to put square to represent the area of the square plus circle to represent the area of the circle. So the area of the square will just be x squared because, you know, base times height. The area of the circle, of course, is pi r squared. So this is the primary equation. Now for the secondary equation, what else do we know that we haven't used yet? Okay, well the very first word of this problem, four feet, four feet of wire is to be used. So that means the total perimeter of the square and circ circumference of the circle added together, that has to add up to four. So uh, the perimeter of the square, we're looking at 4x. And then the circumference of the circle. Well, the formula for circumference is 2 pi r. So those two boundaries should equal 4. So if you look at the primary equation, notice that right now we have two variables. We have x and r. We need to use the secondary equation to form, uh, you know, get one variable by itself that you can then substitute into the primary equation so that you end up with a single variable. Let's get r by itself so we can do that substitution. Subtracting 4x from both sides, actually, let's divide everything by 2 first. So this will be 2x plus pi r is equal to 2. Now, subtracting 2x from both sides, we have pi r is equal to 2 minus 2x. And then dividing both sides by pi, we have r is equal to 2 minus 2x over pi. I'm going to leave it like that for now. I could take out a GCF of 2, but maybe later. So now we can substitute this expression for r in the primary equation. So that's going to give us a is equal to x squared plus pi times, and here comes the 2 minus 2x over pi squared. So I'm just going to show my work here kind of step by step. Okay, let's see. So uh, I think I'll show it this way. 2 minus 2x squared. So I'm squaring the numerator. And I'll just go ahead and square the denominator. So I have this. Now uh, I'm going to have x squared plus this pi is going to cancel out one of these pi's. 
And for now, I'll write 2 minus 2x times 2 minus 2x, because that's how you would square that. But I'll just have pi now. And then I will have area equals x squared plus. And if we FOIL this, or double distribute, that's going to be 4 minus 8x plus 4x squared all over pi. So let's add these two expressions together. Let's make one big fraction. So that means I'm going to need to have like denominators. So if I have pi over pi, so now I have like denominators. So if I add these two fractions together, I'm going to have pi x squared uh, plus 4 minus 8x plus 4x squared all over pi. So it's a little bit strange because my like terms are 4x squared and pi x squared. If this was just a 3, I would put these together and make 7x squared. I still need to put them together, but I cannot add them directly. So Instead, the best I can do is to write, um, let's see, pi plus 4 x squared. Okay, so I'm still combining these like terms, but instead of adding the pi and 4, I, all, the best I can do is to put pi plus 4. And then I still have my minus 8x and my plus 4 all over pi. So this is an expression for the area. This is the thing that I'm trying to maximize. So that means we need to find the extrema. And we know that the way to find extrema is to do the first derivative test. So let's go ahead and take the first derivative so we can get to the first derivative test. So using the power rule, I'm going to multiply this 2 times the number in front. And it's going to wind up doing a, a quick distributive property. And I will get 2 pi plus 8, all right, because I multiply by the 2. And then this will, reducing by 1, I have x. Um, the derivative of negative 8x is minus 8. The derivative of 4 is 0, so I don't write anything there. And this is all over pi. So this is an expression um, for the derivative. So we need to find the critical value by setting the derivative equal to 0. That means we're going to set this numerator equal to 0. So we're going to have this 2 pi plus 8 x minus 8 equals 0. Adding 8 to both sides, we have 2 pi plus 8 x is equal to 8. So getting x by itself, we're just going to divide both sides by 2 pi plus 8. So we're going to have x is equal to 8 over 2 pi plus 8. Notice that all three terms are divisible by 2, so we can go ahead and do that. So that will give us 4 over pi plus 4. This is the critical number. All right, it's the only critical number. So let's go ahead and put this critical number on a number line. By the way, uh, the numerical value of this is 0 0.56 approximately. So keep that in mind as I form my number line. As you set up your number line, it's important to keep the ends of your domain in mind. So the number line is in terms of x. So of course, x being the length of one side of this square, x cannot be negative. So the lower bound is going to be 0. What's the upper bound going to be? So we have a square. We have a total of 4 feet of wire to work with. So the maximum length of x would be 1. Right. If we used all of the wire to make the square, then the four sides would have, have to 
add up to four. So that means each side would be one. So the maximum length of X is going to be one. So when we set up our number line, the domain will be limited by zero and one. Okay, the lower bound of X and the upper bound. Now, somewhere on here, we will put the critical number and I'll just, you know, just to stick it anywhere in here. So um, this is our four over pi plus four. But yeah, keep in mind that it's about 0 0.56. That will help us understand that a good test value to use on the left would be one half because that would be 0 0.5, which would be less than this. And a good test value to use over here okay might be I guess we could use three-fourths so evaluating the first derivative at one-half is going to give us 2 pi plus 8 times a half because that's where X is minus 8 over pi so distributing the one half, that's going to be pi plus four minus eight over pi. So that's going to be pi minus four over pi, right? Because four minus eight is negative four. So remembering that pi is uh, 3.14, etc. This will definitely give us a negative number in the numerator, right? Three point something minus four, that's gonna be a negative number. And divided by pi is still gonna be a negative number. So we will definitely have a negative value in this interval, which tells us that the function is decreasing through this interval. So let's try the same thing with three fourths. So we will have 2 pi plus 8 times 3 fourths minus 8 over pi. Okay, so if you distribute the 3 fourths, you get 3 halves pi plus 6, and then you still have your minus 8. Um, of course, 6 minus 8 is negative 2, so that brings us to 3 over 2 pi minus two over eight. So um, pi by itself is 3.14, etc. Multiplying that by something bigger than one is gonna give us uh, an even bigger number. So we have something bigger than pi, bigger than 3.14, um, minus two. So that's gonna give us a positive value. So we will have a positive value for sure in this interval, which tells us that the function is going to be increasing for this interval. So don't forget that we are trying to maximize the area. However, um, right here at the critical number, we are getting a relative min. So this value will definitely not be the value that gives us the maximum area. In fact, this would be the worst number to use. That means that the maximum area will occur at one of the endpoints of the domain, either at x equals zero or at x equals one. So that's why the title of this uh, video, well, the, the title at the top of the lesson was optimization at an endpoint maximum. So here's our expression for area. Let's go ahead and evaluate at the first endpoint. So let's find the area at zero, which is one possible maximum. So we can do this in our head because if X is zero, um, so the first term will be zero and the middle term will be zero. So that will simply leave us with four over pi. 
And 4 over pi, let's see, 4 divided by pi is approximately uh, 1.27. So the other possible maximum is going to be at the other end point where x is equal to 1. So that's going to give us pi plus 4. Um, and 1 squared is just 1, which we don't need to write down. Minus 8 times 1, so just minus 8 plus 4, all over pi. So let's keep working this out. So a at 1 equals. Notice that we have 4 and another 4, so that'll be 8, and then minus 8. So the three constants cancel each other out. So that leaves us with pi over pi, which of course is equal to 1. So that means that the maximum area is 1.27, which we got when x is equal to 0. If the maximum area will occur when x is equal to 0, that means that we will use 0 feet of wire for the square, because that's what x was, and instead we will use all four feet for the circle. So as you do your optimization problems, always keep in mind that the ideal value may not occur at a critical number. Sometimes the ideal value will occur at one of the extremes or endpoints of the domain.